fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, a stranger on the trail ahead. The general store in Hawksville was one of a row of false front single-story buildings of sun-bleached wood that lined the street for a distance of 200 yards. It was well after closing time, but Andy Conway's store was still lighted. Andy himself stood at the door, bidding good night to a group of men who were leaving. Good night. Good night. I'll have everything ready in a few days, boys. Uh, we're with you, Andy, and we're satisfied that you got something. We'll see you through. Let us know if you need more cash. Yes, thanks, Andy. boys. Thank, thanks a heap. You'll never regret this. All right. Good night. Well, hold on a minute, Sheriff. I want to speak to you. All right, Andy. I'll just shut the door. Sheriff, I sure feel like a new man. It's a great thing to know that your friends and townsmen trust you. It sure is, Andy. Makes you feel that you do most anything sooner and betray that trust, don't it? That's just what it does. I know just how you feel. I felt the same way when the boys re-elected me to office after I'd finished my first term. <laughs> Shucks, you always had the men in Hawksville behind you. What about you? Well, I never knew if it did or not. You've been here for as long as I can remember, Andy. And you sure have been generous with the way you gave out credit here in your store. Oh, that was nothing. Well, it meant food to lots of people when they would have starved otherwise. Oh, I only well, did That's what it did, Andy. Now most of the men that just left your meeting are doggone glad to have the chance to back you. Well, they'll get every dime of their cash back, and with plenty more. Well, I hope so. The point is, though, if you hadn't been so free and easy with giving out supplies to folks that couldn't pay for it, you wouldn't have needed to ask for grub steaks now. <laughs> You'd have had as much as any man in Hawksville. You wouldn't have needed to give out shares in your gold mine. I'm glad to do it. Glad to do it, Sheriff. Well, that's your business. How much cash did you collect? Sheriff, you wouldn't believe it, but I've got over $1,200. And another 2000 promised. Hmm. As much as that? That's what I have. It'll be enough to start working on the gold mine and get what machinery we'll need and really go after that old pay dirt in the right way. What'd you do with the map of the place? I left it right here, right on this table. Take another look at her and tell me if you think it's drawn clear enough to follow. I studied it, Andy. You won't have no trouble finding the location. I'll find the place, all right. I figure Martha can run the store while I go there with some men and kind of get things started. Why, sure, she can. Andy, there's only one thing. What's that? Well, you said your brother found this place, this uh, gold location. He did. But you never saw it. No, but I'd take Sam's word for anything. He told me how good it was. And he was a man that knew what he was talking about. So I've heard. He guaranteed it was worth a plenty. 
Yeah, it was the last time I saw him. He's died since then. I know. I was afraid for some time that I'd never learn where the place was located. Then along came this map with a letter from the lawyer in the East who was closing out Sam's affairs. Map was about all Sam left. No cash at all. Well, Andy, I'm with you all the way. You know that. I know you are, Sheriff. Say, uh, that claim was never filed, was it? No. You know what I told the men at the meeting. It was never even staked out. Mm-hmm. Well, you better get there and tend to that as soon as you can. Oh, sure. I'll go there right away now that I've got the cash. Hey, wait. Huh? Eh? The sheriff had been facing the window that looked down the dusty main street. Suddenly, he motioned Andy into silence and moved closer to the window. His right hand moved toward his holster. Down the main street, coming straight toward them, raced a stranger on a white horse. A big man on a charging stallion. Dust swirled heavy behind the horse's pounding hoofs, and the sheriff's eyes narrowed as the stranger pulled the horse to a halt, directly outside, and flung himself to the ground. Hey, someone's ridden up mighty sudden. Look at that white horse near the hitch rack. Yeah. The fellas coming in the door. Sheriff, are you in there? Looking for me? Sheriff. Sure, I'm the sheriff. I... Hey, you're wearing a mask. Uh, never mind the mask. You know anything about the Carter gang? Carter? You don't mean Lefty Carter. Yes. He hasn't been in these parts for over a year. There's warrants for his arrest. What about him? Now you just... Put that gun away. I came to tell you that the Carter gang is heading this way and driving a big herd of cattle. Driving cattle? This way? Yes. Yeah, but Carter knows there's a reward in his neck in Hawksville. He wouldn't dare to come here. Well, he's coming and he's just outside of town. Say, what's that noise? Who are you, stranger? What's the difference, Sheriff? If you want Carter, get your men together. Sheriff! Go- Sheriff! Look down the road. Look at the cattle coming. Hey, Sheriff! Sheriff, handy! Get that door closed! There's a stampede heading right down the main street. Carter's got it behind those longhorns. Andy, Andy, what's going on? Well, there's a stampede. Get the door closed. Before you close the door, let me out. I've got to get my horse away from there. Shut the door. Shut the door. Martha, get back. Andy, his wife, and the sheriff stood inside the closed shop watching the frantic mass of cattle storm through the streets of the town. They saw half a dozen hard-riding men firing pistols into the air as they urged the wild longhorns on their way. Finally, when the last of the cattle was gone... Now, what the Sam Hill do you make of that, Andy? Well, maybe those men were just driving the livestock through town. No such thing. That was a man-made stampede if ever I saw one. But why? Well, I don't know. I recognized a couple of gunmen who used to travel with Lefty Carter. I didn't see Lefty himself. Oh, me neither. Lefty Carter? That outlaw? Yeah. Who said he was around these parts? The mask man. I wish it had been daytime so as we could have got a better look at the cattle. I wonder whose brand they wore. I... Hey, Sheriff. Huh? Didn't I leave that map right here? Well, yeah, right there on the table. Why? It's gone. What? Yes, it was here. I know it was, but it's gone now. Andy, what map? The map. You don't mean... It's not here. Not on the floor, either. Now, oh, Sheriff, don't play a joke on me. Don't do it. Tell me if you hit the map. I'm not playing any jokes. I didn't see the map after you showed it to me there at the table. But it couldn't have got away by itself. That mask man. Oh, he couldn't have got it. He wasn't anywhere near the table. Remember? He stood right at the door when he talked to us. Andy, look. What's that? The two men whipped around with the tone of the woman's voice. A thin streak of sunlight from the window cut through the room, slicing down into a dark corner of floor. They saw it, too. The blade still quivering in the sunlight. The shining steel vibrating. It looked deadly, menacing. A mute messenger of peril. The point buried in the rough pine board. A message that said, danger. Great guns. A knife stuck right in the middle of the floor, holding down a message. Let me see that. I'll get it. It wasn't there when the stampede started. I know it. Yeah, here it is. Take a look. It wasn't there when I came through from my rooms in the back of the store. I would have seen it for sure if it had been. This is from Lefty Carter. Lefty Carter? No. No, not that killer. Andy, he says he's got the map. What? Lefty Carter? He'll let you know by and by how you can get it back. But if Lefty Carter has it, he can stake the claim. He can get the gold mine. Like funny, Ken. Let him show himself anywhere and he'll hang for what he's done in the past. But he could get someone else to do it. We're not after writing this note. Nope, that scheming foxy critter has got some other scheme in mind, Andy. He's got something big in the back of his head, and this is just the start of it. Lefty Carter, wanted by the law in several counties, joined his outlaw band not far from town. The cattle, which had been scattered after the stampede, was spread over a wide expanse of range. 
But the men who stampeded it were in a small hunter's shack to meet their boss. It worked out just like I said it would, boys. That's right, Lefty. The stampede drew everyone to the doors and windows to see what was going on. And I didn't have no trouble at all slipping in the rear door of Conway's store and getting that man. I told you'd be there, Lefty. It's a good thing for you. You was right, Butch. Yeah, I knew Andy Conway would have it out showing it to the men at his meeting. As I say, it's a good thing you was right. I don't keep men with me long when they make a mistake. No. That's what I hear. Now, boys, I'll tell you how this little hunk of paper is going to be worth a lot to us. Uh, we can stake a claim. Shut up, Butch. We don't do nothing of the sort. Uh, what? Don't what? Not stake a claim? We don't take the gold mine? Now, look, listen to me. If we go there and stake the claim, then file our claim, what happens? All of us that the law wants land in jail and then hang. Well, the law don't have anything against me. No, Butch. The law doesn't have anything against you. Yet. Well, I could stick the claim in my name, and then we could split the profits from the mine. And... <laughs> Do you think I was born yesterday? You staked the claim. Why, you double-crossing sidewinder. Once you had it staked in your name, you'd see the rest of us jailing out of your way, and then you'd have it all. No, I wouldn't. Well, we're going to handle it different. I know what everyone thinks, Andy Conway. I know that most everyone in town that has some cash has bought a share of this gold claim. All right. What happens? Without this map, they all lose the cash they would make when the claim was developed. Now, do you think all those important men in town would sooner jail me and lose a valuable gold mine or dismiss the charges against me and get back the map that shows where the claim is at? Dismiss the charges against you? Oh, what about the rest of us? They've got to give me a full pardon for every man in my outfit if they want this map back. And pay plenty of cash besides. Because there's no copies of the map, see? Right, right. <laughs> no. You see, Butch made sure there was no copies. We got the only map there is. <laughs> sure a big help, Lefty. Me being able to move around town like a can without having folks know I'm working with you. Don't get big ideas, Butch. I can get someone to take your place in the gang any time I want. What's more, as soon as those pardons come through for all of us, we'll all be able to go and come as we please. Now we've got to get ready to shove on. Can't stay here till the sheriff gets a searching party after us. Yeah, where will we hide out? I know a place. Come on, get ready. What? What's that? Trouble outside. Yeah, what's the matter here? Let's look what we found. Redskin. Bring him inside. Come on, Take his guns and keep him covered. We got his guns. Where was he? Uh, me and Joe were on guard, like you said. We were waiting to give word in case a posse headed this way before he got done with the meeting. What's that got to do with the redskin? I thought I heard something like a horse's hoof at the rear of the shack. I knew our horses weren't there, so me and Joe went around and snuck up on both sides. This redskin was at the window hearing all that was said in here. So, that's it, huh? Uh, me know what you plan. You do, huh? You plenty big fool. Law not give you pardon. Someday you hang. We'll see about that. Why was you hanging around? Me not talk. Hey, Lefty, I know who that redskin is. I've seen him before. Hey, who is he? His name's Tarno. Tarno? Yeah. He's a partner of the Lone Ranger. What? The Lone Ranger. Where's he at? What's the Lone Ranger doing around here? Yeah, we gotta fight the Lone Ranger. Yeah, we gotta fight Shut up! Shut up, all of you! Shut! You redskin. Is your name Tarno? Ah, uh, that my name. Is it true that the Lone Ranger is near here? Lone Ranger put you crook in jail. Him get all of you. <laughs> Well, boys, it looks like we've got Lady Luck smiling at us. We not only learn that the Lone Ranger's nearby and figuring on trying to catch us, but we get a hold of his partner. If this Lone Ranger wants the life of this redskin spared, he better keep a long ways from us and not interfere with my plans. And we let him know it. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The day after Andy Conway's map was stolen, the sheriff came into the store to confer with the unhappy fellow. Andy Conway had changed since his map had been stolen. Something seemed to have gone out of him. His hopes and his dreams were gone. But that map had meant gold. Gold and the security that it brings. And now those things were gone. Somehow Andy couldn't believe that things would ever be right again. He shook his head slowly at the sheriff. His voice was low and hopeless. Uh, it's no use, Sheriff. There's nothing we can do. Nothing at all. Uh, I've had men scouring the country for some trace of that gang. No luck, eh? Well, we found where they went after they left here. You did? Yep. Went to a hunter's cabin. Old place outside of town. But they uh, left there. Uh. After that, the trail was lost and can't be found. Well, that licks us then. What about the cattle that was stampeded? Oh, that was left by the crooks. It was scattered bad. Some of the men are trying to round it up now and take it back to where it come from. Uh, Sheriff, I had a note. You had a note? From Lefty? Oh, why didn't you say so? Here it is. But there's nothing we can do about it. Here, let me see it. What's it say? Well, I was told to let everyone that bought a share of the gold mine to see it. If Lefty and his gang are given free pardons of the charges against him, they'll give back the map. Otherwise, he'll burn it up. Free pardons? That's right. That's what he wants. Mm, I see he does. Why, the ornery coyote sure wants plenty. Well, forget the note, Sheriff. Don't show it to none of the men. Well, it says here it's got to be shown. It's addressed to everyone that bought a share of the claim. You know what'll happen. They'll all start trying to get those men pardoned. They might even go to the governor to get pardons, so they wouldn't lose their interest in the claim. It's no use, Sheriff. We can't do that. Hey, how'd you get this note? Oh, well, fella brought it in to me. He said he met a man on the trail. That mask ran again. Now, see here, you. Sheriff, I want to speak to you and Andy. I'll do the talking. You were here yesterday. Hold on, you... Sheriff. I'm as anxious to find Lefty Carter and his gang as you are. He's captured my friend. Who? Tato, an Indian who was trying to learn something about the gang. Sheriff, we're going to find Carter's hideout. Oh, just like that, huh? Just easy like that, find the hideout. Well, I'll have you know, stranger, that you got some explaining to do. I don't see how you could have done it, but maybe you're the one that stole that map. Let me see that note. But I tell... Show it to him, Sheriff. Might as well. Now, where'd you get it? A short, heavy-set man brought it into me. The man who rode a bay horse? Yes. Do you know him? Yes, I saw his horse outside your place a little while ago. Oh. So you've been watching, eh? Yes. The man say where he got the note? Oh, he just said he was riding into town when he met a man on the trail that gave it to him. That's all he knows about it. What are you going to do? Well, I... You're going to give your answer tonight. But there's nothing we can do. It says here that if you agree to the terms, it'll leave the light burning in the window of your store. Then you'll be told how to send the pardons and get back the map. Yeah. If only we knew where that bunch of crooks are in hiding. Maybe we will. Huh? We will? How? Andy, you're going to do what I say. Well, now, you see Sheriff, here... if you've nothing to lose but money. I... I have the life of my best friend at stake. I'm going to make the plans and you're going to help carry them out. But I... I like the way you talk, mister. I'm with you. If you've got any ideas, let's hear them. Dad, Raddit, I've spent a whole life hoping to someday strike it rich. If you can help get that map back... I'd like to get that lefty Carter, King. And I want Tonto back. Now, Andy, and you, Sheriff, listen. The masked man started to speak. His voice was low, his words shortened to the point. And as they listened, old Andy Conway seemed to come to life again, and the sheriff moved closer. The masked man gave them confidence... The tone of his voice, the way his eyes bored into them from the slits in his blast mask, made them realize that this man could lead them from defeat to victory. The sheriff nodded his head. Andy clutched the masked man's arm eagerly, saying, Yes, yes, go on, masked man. And when the masked man finished and moved out of the door and rode away, the sheriff and Andy watched him leave, then turned toward each other. Andy grinned, and a wide smile spread over the sheriff's face. The two men shook hands gleefully. That night... Butch watched and waited until he saw the light gleam from the window of the little store. He grinned in satisfaction and muttered to himself. <laughs> Good. Everything's as it should be. I thought it'd come out that way. Just a minute. Hey, I want to talk, talk to you. Now, see here, let me go. Come on. Fast. That's right. I thought you'd be in with the gang. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll talk further when we get to the store. And in the sheriff will meet us there. You let go of You'll me. do nothing. I saw you when you came into town. I thought you were one of Lefty Carter's gang. You or no one else can prove that. It doesn't need proof. As the Lone Ranger moved toward the porch of the general store, his hand holding Butch's arm in an iron grip, getting closer and closer to the lighted window behind which waited old Andy Conway, suddenly Butch tore himself free. 
His hand whipped down with the speed of a snake. His hand closed around the butt of his six gun. Started to yank it from the holster. Then his jaw dropped in amazement. His hand slowly opened, releasing the gun. For the masked man had beaten him to the draw. Faster than lightning, almost in the wink of an eye. A gun was in the Lone Ranger's right hand. The muzzle was a black hole centered right on Butch's staring eyes. The outlaw's shoulders sagged. He was completely licked. Silently, he let the masked man take his arm once more and lead him up on the porch. Go right in. Men are waiting for you. Well, you got him, eh? Good work. Sheriff, you and I will talk to him. And he knows what he's to do. I'll go right away and tend to it. Good. Well, now, what's this all about? Why am I here? The masked man will do the talking. Well, you got nothing against me. I told you that the note I brought was handed to me by a gent I never saw before. Never mind all that. The sheriff isn't going to try to prove anything against you. What's more, I know the situation. I know about the map that was stolen. The Indian, too. And I can tell you one thing. If the gang that's got both is crossed up in any way, the map will burn and the redskin die. That's about the same as admitting that you're in with them. I can tell you more than that. Let's suppose that uh, Lefty's expecting a messenger to come back to him and the same don't show up. We know what would happen. Good. The messenger, and I ain't saying you're him, will go back all right. There's only one thing. The terms of the agreement are too stiff. Oh, they are, huh? You see, the message said that the charges against all of Lefty's men would have to be dropped. That's more than can be done. We couldn't promise that. Now, ain't that too bad? What would Lefty say to a compromise? What's that? The charges against Lefty would be dropped. The rest of the gang got a short jail term. Yeah, suppose the men were charged with disturbing the peace instead of murder. How would that be? I wouldn't know. Well, I'll tell you. Now, let's not fool around with this. We know you're the messenger. We don't care. We want that map. And Toto. That's right. The map and the Indian to go free. You hurry back to the hideout, wherever it is, and see what Lefty says to the terms we spoke of. You'll follow me. We won't. How could we without your knowing it? Yeah, you couldn't. You critters have got the whip hand and you know it. <laughs> Glad you admit it. Uh, how long will it take you to get there and back? I don't know. We've got to work fast. You've got to be back here before daybreak, you know. Why have I? Well, the United States Marshal's do here. If he's on hand, we won't be able to make any deal at all. Oh, I see. No matter how much we'd like to. Sheriff. Well? There's likelihood that the Marshal will be here any time now. Yeah, I know it. Now make tracks, will you? We know that Lefty's eager to make a deal. It would gain him nothing to have the Marshal put a stop to any deals we want to make. Well, go as fast as I can. Good. But mind you... Yeah? It'll be known if I'm followed and then everything is off. Hey, look. You know the Lone Ranger here. You've got his partner. We know that. Now, I give you my word, you'll not be followed. We'll be right here when you get back. But hurry. I'm on my way. Andy, you found his horse all right? Sure. And you washed his hoofs? I sure did. I scrubbed him spick and span. Good. Now, Sheriff, watch the time till he gets back. One hour passed, and then another, while the Lone Ranger, Andy, and the sheriff waited. Martha came in with food and hot coffee while those in the little store kept the vigil. At the end of another half hour, the sound of approaching hoofs could be heard faintly at first, and then louder. Then Butch reined up outside the door. The men rushed out to meet him. You bring that lantern, Andy. I've got it. Go in as fast as I could. So it seems. The horse is pretty winded. Well, I know what it'd mean if a marshal got here, and so did Lefty. You spoke to him? Yep, I did. What's his answer? He'll make the deal. He says to put it in writing. We won't need the answer, Sheriff. Hey, what are you doing with that lantern? We were just looking at the hoofs of your horse, that's all. I saw them the last time you were here, but we had to make sure of one detail. Huh? The hoofs have red clay as high as the fetlocks. What about it? Mister, don't make no mistake. Don't make a mistake, because if you do, it'll cost the life of Tonto. And we'll lose that map as well. I don't think I've made a mistake. Sheriff, put that man under arrest. Hey, now look All here. right, Butch, we're holding you. No, you can't. Throw him in jail. Then get your deputies ready for action. We're riding tonight to get Tonto and that map. The sheriff and Andy Conway put Butch in jail. Quickly, a posse was rounded up. Men grabbed their guns, stowed cartridges in their pockets, saddled their horses, and mounted. They met in front of the store. The lone ranger lifted his arm, waved forward. Silver reared, then leaped ahead. His hoops thundered along the moonlit ground, his white mane whipping like the northern lights. Behind him, through the dust, galloped the sheriff and old Andy and the posse, stretching their horses to full gallop to keep up with Silver. On they rode, the lone ranger holding Silver in check so the others would not be left behind. On and on into the night, on the trail of the outlaws. Meanwhile, Lefty and his gang felt quite secure in their hideout. They gloated over the success of their scheme and made jokes about Tonto tightly tied nearby. Boys, boys, as I figure it out, 
Bush should be here in a few minutes with the agreement in writing. He better be here doggone soon. I'm getting tired of waiting for him. That redskin will sure have a rough time of it if Butch was to be captured. How about it, Tano? No agreement ever come. No, it won't, huh? Lone Ranger never made deal with Crook. That's enough. You all Crook. And someday you all hang. Let me take a crack at him for talking like that. Ah, uh, you fella, plenty big coward. Plenty brave when you got other men outnumbered. Hey, boys, I hear someone. That'll be Butch. Get the door open so we can see for sure. You think there's plenty of moon tonight. Hey, that's not Butch. Silver. It's a Lone Ranger. Get your hands up. That window. The sheriff. Oh. I got you covered. Look here. No guns, you crook. Oh, Silver's teddy boy. <laughs> Take the gun, Sheriff. I'll hold the drop on them. I'll show you. Oh, my hand. All right, boys, close in. We got the whole wolf pack. Hey, Toto, are you all right? Uh, me plenty good. I'll cut those ropes in a jiffy. There you are. Uh, map over there. Me get it. Is the map all right? They didn't get the chance to burn it? Uh, map all plenty good. They didn't get a chance to do anything. We got the drop on them from all sides. Butch squeal, that dirty double cross. Oh, he didn't, Lefty. Butch was just as surprised as you were. You'd never found a shack if he hadn't told you. Butch didn't need to squeal. The Lone Ranger saw the red clay on the hoofs of his horse. Red clay? That's right. He knew there was only one section where a horse could go through red clay as deep as the fetlocks. Then when he found out how long it took for Butch to ride from town to your hideout and back to town, he knew about how far to come to find you. Well, I'll get square. Maybe you'll drill me, but before you do, I'll square things with the Lone Ranger. I'll get you. Look out. Hey. No! Anyone else wants a gun shot out of his hand, just slap leather. Oh, my hand, my hand. Take over, boys. Get ropes on him before another one gets the full notion he can shoot faster than the Lone Ranger. Hey, hold on there. Stop that masked man so we can show we appreciate what he's done. Hey, wait a minute, mister. You've got a lot of rewards coming to you. Use the rewards to develop your gold mine. Wait, we got to thank you. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.